Hello and welcome to this demonstration of the Tamburg Model 15 uh, tape recorder from uh, 1968. Um, this machine was one of Tran Tanberg's first transistorized machines. Tran Tanberg were rather late into the transistorized uh, market. They employed tubes for quite a while there. Um, and it's really the successor to the tube-based models 8 and 9. Um, which in turn were successors to even earlier machines introduced in the 1950s. So it has a, a long, typically Tanberg lineage of, of earlier machines <coughs> uh, with tubes. The Model 15 um, was introduced at a time when stereo was becoming the norm, and Tanberg being an upmarket manufacturer would normally, one would have expected that they wouldn't introduce too many mono recorders at that time, but another big market for Tanberg at the time was institutional and educational use, and that's the reason I think that they introduced this particular machine, um, primarily for use in schools or institutions, language laboratories, etc. In fact, the Model 15 is, is often used in, in the Tanberg uh, language laboratory system as, as the teacher master recorder. The Model 15 was also available in a number of versions which were geared towards students uh, uh, with, for instance, one version which, which has two, where you can record independently on, on two tracks and listen at them at the same time for use in, in language use uh, as a standalone recorder. And there was also a version that was intended for use in a group up to 15, 15 students where there, was, where there were individual volume controls for each of the student earphones. But this is the standard Model 15. This happens to be a four-track version, which is slightly unusual. Uh, being an institutional machine primarily, it would have been normal for this to be a two-track machine, um, as two-track machines are easier to operate. There's no track selector, and also they're more reliable since the track width is wider on the tape, and, and there's less of a problem with dropouts and dirt on the tape, etc. So, being a 4-track, this machine might have been more intended for home use, as that's where 4-track found its, its, um, its, its, its market. Um, this particular machine uh, was manufactured in 1974, and in fact, Tamper did manufacture this machine for many years with a, a virtually identical appearance. Uh, they changed some details in the casing, and the last versions to be produced had a black top cover instead of this gray, uh, gray, which was typical for Tamburg during the 60s. Incidentally, if you look at this machine, it looks virtually identical to any other Tamburg of the 60s until you start looking at the exact position of the knobs, which tended to vary between different versions. Um, I'll now go through the, the various features quickly. There's an on-off switch here to the right, a tape counter which, with a uh, zero button here, um, a five position function selector with a free position where the reels turn independently of each other, a stop position where they are interlocked so they, they uh, turn in opposite directions, fast wind to the left, that is rewind, fast wind forward, and the play position. There were uh, three speeds available on this machine, three and three quarter inches, one and seven eighths, and seven and a half inches, which would have catered to most of the uses uh, for a machine of this type. Uh, there were, of course, higher and lower speeds, but they weren't that common, and, and if, if you find a tape lying about, chances are one of these three speeds will, will cover it. Uh, there's an output volume control, uh, speaker selector, you can select between internal, internal and external, or an external loudspeaker. There's a pause control for quickly stopping the tape, a microphone input, a uh, record playback amplifier switch here, which normally is in the playback position when you're listening to tapes. Switching over to the record position causes the indicator to light up, and putting it in the amplifier position enables you to amplify either a, uh, a microphone or a signal appearing at the line level inputs. And that position was primarily intended when you were using the machine as a central unit in, a, in a, a, some sort of an audio system. For instance, at a school you might have had this machine coupled to a, a record player, and in the amplifier position, you could have listened to records. Um, there are two concentric knobs here, which are the microphone and line level uh, input volume controls, which are used during the ampl uh, amplifier or record positions. So that means you can actually do active mixing between a microphone and a line input. 
There's the track selector, which has three positions. Uh, there are on a four track tape, there are, as, the as can be heard from the name, there are four tracks, two of which can be accessed on each side of the tape. Um, they're numbered one, two, three, four, and owing to the slightly unusual track arrangement, or slightly odd, I should say, track arrangement on a four track reel to reel, um, the tracks you can access from one side are numbered one and three, and the ones on the other side are numbered two and four. And the track selector also has a duo position whereby you can listen to tracks 1 and 3, or alternatively 2 and 4 at the same time, uh, which can be used for trick recordings, or it can be used to listen to a master track together with a student recorded track. Finally, there are two tone controls, a bass control and a treble control. Um, and uh, the output power of this unit is 10 watts, but that's only available if you use an external loudspeaker using the internal loudspeaker uh, it's, it's limited to 3 watts, as the speaker has a, has a, a limited size. So we're going to try to, to run a tape through this and make a little test recording. Here I'm using the maximum available reel size, which is 7 inches. Putting this the function selector in the sweet free positions enables me to thread the tape easily. But when I uh, put it in the central position, as you can see, the reels turn in opposite directions. And that means that it uh, that that's actually a braking position, and yet the reels still turn freely. And that's a, a typical Tanberg feature of, of this this era. I'm going to use a microphone here, which is the Tanberg TM4 in a plastic case, which would have been the machine uh, microphone of choice for this machine. And what I'm going to do is put the machine in record mode. And if I turn up the volume control here, you will possibly be able to see the needle in the recording level indicator fluctuating, indicating that there is actually a signal present. And if I start the tape, I can make a uh, brief test recording on track one. Um, and uh, incidentally, there is on this machine there the output volume, the the speaker is active during recording as well. If I turn the output volume control up. You'll prob after a while you'll probably hear a slight echo, and then after a while you'll, you'll hear a howling sound, which is due to acoustic feedback from the loudspeaker back into the microphone. So normally you'd have the output volume turned down during a recording when you're recording with a microphone. So let's wind this back and uh, briefly listen to it. There's, on this machine, there, the output volume, the, the speaker is active during recording as well. If I turn the output volume control up, You'll probably, after a while, you'll probably hear it. There you go. Um, if we wind the tape back again, we can make a recording on the uh, other available channel, track, track 3, or in Tanberg parlance, the extra track. The tracks have, have names in Tanberg's, on Tanberg's machine. They're called Normal and Extra. I've never seen that on any other manufacturer. That was something that Tanberg invented. So we'll wind this back as well. And then we can listen to the uh, our recording on in track three. Extra track. The tracks have, have names in Tanberg's. And if we put the track selector in the dual position, on Tanberg's test machine recording called on normal track extra. one. I've never seen that on any and other manufacturer. That was something that Tanberg. And, uh, you can hear that both tracks are heard at the same time, as I mentioned previously. The motor in this machine, it's a single motor machine, but the motor is relatively powerful, so the winding speed is pretty good. Um, better than the earlier models, uh, one, or sorry, models eight and nine, which had relatively small motors, and those machines were mostly budget machines. Whereas this is sort of supposed to be the be-all and end-all of, of, of mono tape recorders. The sound quality is quite good on these machines. Um, I think was the best that Tanberg actually could do. So they can be used for music, not just speech. Uh, the final feature I want to demonstrate is the uh, end stop, mechanical automatic end stop. There's a sensor here by the, the right hand guide pin which shuts the motor off if there's no tape in the machine. And that's important to know if you're testing a machine like this, it will not run if there's not a tape in it or if you somehow force this with a, with a piece of cardboard or something, force it into the, uh, the, the other position. Um, 
the end stop is great for fast wind because the reels stop automatically and, and the tape doesn't sort of whisk around as it, uh, as it's when it, when it runs off the reel. But in the play mode, it means that the machine shuts off the motor, but the pinch roller is still in contact with the capstan. Uh, and if you leave it in that position for any length of time, it will create a little dent in the rubber roller, creating causing wow in the in the sound subsequently. So it's primarily a feature intended for use for fast wind. Okay, there you have it: the Tanberg Model 15 uh, reel-to-reel -reel recorder, mono reel-to-reel -reel recorder, introduced in '68. This particular machine from 1974. Thank you for watching, and goodbye.